Hi, I'm Adam Greenberg, reporter with SC Magazine. I'm here with Richard Moulds, VP of Strategy with Talus eSecurity. Talus just released their ninth annual global encryption report. But before we talk about that, uh, Richard, can you tell us a little bit about what encryption is and what it means today? <laughs> well, encryption a, is a scary topic for some people. A lot of people think about, uh, obviously, it's the process of scrambling data to make it unreadable. So if somebody steals the information, which, of course, there have been plenty of stories of people doing over the last few months, then that information is useless to any attacker. So that's the purpose for encryption. There's really two components. There's the algorithm that actually converts good data into scrambled data. That's just math, basically. And then there's the secret key that is used to perform that operation. So you have your data, you have the algorithm, and you have the key. Algorithms open, typically, and the key is secret. Can you tell us a little bit about the algorithms? How many are there? Well, there's not that many, not as many as you would think. There's, um, there's really three or four famous ones like the RSA algorithm and the AES algorithm, and there's a sort of newer one called ECC, elliptic curve. So only, really only three or four and variants on those three or four, not as many as you think. Um, these things take a long time to approve and a long time to develop. Proving an algorithm is secure can take 10 years or so, and it takes a long time for this technology to change and to be embodied in products. So, you know... The algorithms we have today have been proven, have been around for five, ten years. They'll be around for a while longer, I think. Um, so it's really not the algorithm. Don't focus on the algorithm. In some ways, that's a red herring. It's proven stuff. What you need to think about is focusing on the keys, how they're managed, and the people that organize the system and look after it and set the policies. Before we get into key management, can you just tell us a little bit about how the keys work? Are they unique to each, per, uh, each organization or each encryption? Absolutely. Keys are random numbers. Big, long, random numbers. You can think of them really as sort of super-duper passwords, thousands of bits long. And um, yes, yeah, absolutely unique to organizations and almost certainly unique to individual documents, individual users, individual databases, individual files. So in some ways, you want as many keys as you can get because if, then if one is stolen or one is lost, the impact is, is, is lessened. So you certainly don't want to be uh, uh, having keys common across lots of organizations or lots of departments or systems. Uh, that would be a bad thing. You know, sharing keys becomes imperative when you share documents. If I, if I give you, for example, a Word document that's encrypted, I'd need to give you somehow the key to unlock it. Um, but that would be the only real excuse for sharing keys between organizations. What are some of the problems that organizations face regarding key management? You said it's one of the important things that they need to keep, a, keep an eye out for. Well, it's, it's almost the most important thing. I think of, of uh, key management as the Achilles heel of cryptography. Encryption is this wonderful technology. It can make all of this valuable data useless to an attacker. But if you lose the key, then you've probably scrambled your own data and you'll never get it back. And if the key's stolen, then the attacker can get you know, any information that was ever encrypted using that key. And if, unless, you, unless you change the key, they'll get all the information that you're about to encrypt with that key. So it really is the Achilles heel. So looking after keys... Uh, both from the perspective of not losing them, as well as ensuring that nobody can steal them, becomes really critical. And these keys are secrets. Um, companies like people are not very good at keeping secrets, uh, particularly when this key needs to be copied across you know, hundreds of web servers or you know, thousands of tape drives or disk drives, um, you know, maybe hundreds or thousands of users. That becomes a challenge. The more times you copy something, the more times you share it, the harder it becomes to keep it a secret. And many organizations... Um, are not that well geared up to keeping secrets. Banks have been keeping secrets for years, but you know, many other organizations and lots of other sectors are not so good at keeping secrets, as we've found out, of course, over recent months. Industries that have been using crypto for years have, have figured out how to keep these keys safe. Um, so there are chips in cell phones, there are chips in laptops, and there are devices called hardware security modules that fit into servers uh, or in the cloud that enable you to lock these things away. You know, keys are are just random numbers, and sometimes their sheer randomness in some ways gives them a characteristic that you can search for keys. You can find keys on disk drives, you can find keys in memory space, you can watch applications running and fetching keys to do something with them. So finding keys is not that difficult. Uh, so really what you need to do is take them out of the operating system, get them off the host, and get them into dedicated chips or dedicated bits of hardware. I mean, one of the reasons why uh, the rest of the world, outside of the US, uses chip cards for payment rather than magnetic stripe, um, is that, those, that that secret cardholder information is stored inside the chip, not stored on the stripe on the back of the card. So, you know, chip cards themselves are an example of using 
dedicated hardware to lock away secrets. So if you've got crypto systems, think about how safe the operating system is, how safe the application is, how safe the host platform is. And if you're not comfortable, uh, then there are technologies to lock your keys away. And as I say, in the context of, of servers, that's typically called a hardware security module. And these things have been used in the banking industry for, for 20 years. They're very mature, they're well understood. But so far, they've been relatively you know, constrained to those sorts of industries, the regulated industries. I think these days, uh, when we think about data breach disclosure law, uh, best practices, and even some of the concerns about um, surveillance and data snooping that we've heard about lately, um, many other industries, healthcare, utilities, transportation, have got lots of private data that they need to protect. Encryption is a great way of doing so, as long as you can get your head around managing keys. Richard, thank you so much for all this great insight. I'm Adam Greenberg, reporter with SC Magazine, here with Richard Moulds, VP of Strategy with Talisee Security. Thanks for tuning in.